We're focused on that compliance as code world that they need to live in. We're also focused on areas like open SCAP and NIST with HIPAA compliance. When we talk about HIPAA compliance, this isn't something Red Hat did and pushed out there. This is Ansible playbooks that have gone through the industry that have been published and validated by external parties that we provide back. But we also wanted to make sure that we could focus on that continuous compliance that organizations need. Again, because that cloud native mindset and pattern needs to be about, I can run at scale, I can process data at scale, oh, and I can tell my bosses I do it securely because I'm using not what I think is good, I'm using community driven policies that others have implemented, the industry has validated, and we can contribute back to those or we can implement those. With consistent and verif verifiable processes, we can provide transparency and we can also help reduce that human error. And notice if you look at the visual here, the experts are not just people, they're actually companies, they're actually standards orgs, and they're actually the open source community that can all be implemented and uplifted into this platform. And the last thing I'll say before I hand it over is notice the amount of resources that can use this one platform. It's unifying operations with analytics focused around security with developers. With that, Brad, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to stop sharing so you can go ahead and pick it up. Awesome. Thanks, Alan. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So let's just continue because that's a, that's a perfect segue into um, you know, a specific use case I wanted to show you. Um, so just picking up off that example, as I mentioned, I get to work with our uh, customers here in the Southwest. And one of those is, uh, is a hospital that was looking at, you know, how can we implement this automated um, compliance? And, you know, what are the tools necessary and, and how do we jump in? And just to jump right in, Alan mentioned Open SCAP. Um, Open SCAP is going to be one of the central frameworks that is involved in automated compliance. Uh, if I can even pause on this picture, that's a really good picture. Um, this website, open-scap.org, I encourage you to go there now just to check it out. But just to say a few words about this picture, it's really a suite of uh, tools and frameworks that allow um, external entities uh, like Red Hat, like other um, you know, community resources out there, other companies, to contribute code specific to compliance scanning. So we're gonna talk about automated compliance in two steps. First, we're gonna talk about the compliance and then how we automate it. Uh, so as, as part of this, um, you have things like the security guide, which is a, a very customized guide based on the type of content that you're working with. You have the workbench, which is a nice GUI uh, for how you would scan an actual system. I'm gonna show you that next actually. And then some other sort of spinoffs uh, with, you know, provisioning systems and, you know, adding these types of scanners early in the process, because it's one thing to remediate a system, but it's another to make sure that every system you build is automatically remediated, like directly to Alan's point about let's do this at large scale and let's think about that from the very beginning. So what does Open SCAP look like? I think the best way to show that uh, is first to show you what the SCAP workbench looks like. Uh, so let me just show you, I have this um, pulled up on a system here. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is that everything I'm showing you here is free and open source, right? So you could definitely grab this code yourself and download it and check it out. But the reason I'm showing you this is that this is a GUI front end around um, selecting a policy that you'd like to start with. And the reason I'm showing you this now is that out of all the policies here, and you have even some that are um, sort of drafts and not quite ready for prime time, you have all kinds of Australian cybersecurity, criminal justice information, but then we have the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. So this is HIPAA. Um, this is going to be a, a, a big chunk towards getting us to the things that we need to automate compliance across different systems. So when I pull up this HIPAA profile, 
it shows me a little bit of a laundry list of all the things that at the lowest level that go into what makes a system HIPAA compliant. Um, so if I go a little bit deeper, I'm just going to hit the customize button here. And this is a tool that lets you sort of check and uncheck all the things that come as part of this HIPAA compliance profile. Some of these things are unchecked by default. It's, it's, how, it, it's how strictly you need to adhere to this. Uh, so as part of that, maybe there's something where you, you want to ensure that the Docker service is enabled or disabled. Um, you want to make sure that some of these um, traditionally insecure services might be removed or, or even disabled, like Telnet, for example. Um, so when you go through and you customize this, you can save it and view it, and it's a really nice little tool. Uh, but the other reason I'm showing you this uh, is that everything that you customize and everything that you create in here, whether it's HIPAA or, you know, maybe if you're talking payer to payer, maybe it's PCI compliant in some, in some way, but for most of the part, it would be HIPAA here. Uh, there's a nice little button here that says generate remediation rule. And Open SCAP supports a few different things here, Bash, Puppet, but, you know, this is a little bit of a, a teaser to the September session where we're doing Ansible 101. Everything in Open SCAP nowadays can be exported as an Ansible playbook. And that Ansible playbook uh, really takes advantage of all of the automation that comes as part of Ansible, and that's the automated part of the automated remediation. So just, uh, just continuing on to the sort of teaser for uh, September, I wanted to show you not a lot of slides, I promise, but you know, two, three slides tops just about what is Ansible and what we'll be talking about as we get closer to September. But uh, really this one picture says a lot in that it's, it comprises of the Ansible engine. Uh, we call that the core or the engine, and, and that is the command line backend for automation. And we often use the term simple, powerful, and agentless because that was, uh, those are some architectural decisions that were made very early on in the process. I'm gonna show you a web front end and API in front of that. And that's gonna correspond to this sort of red section at the top around what's called Ansible Tower. And Ansible Tower has other APIs for taking this to the next level and doing large scale types of automation around HIPAA compliance. Uh, but just if I could show you one additional slide, I would show you this one. Uh, sort of what can I do using, using Ansible? And we're here. Uh, we're in this sort of security and compliance box. And you can do all of the things at the top on any of the devices at the bottom. And that goes back to the fact that it is agentless as well. So we can talk to all of the major cloud providers. We talk to containers, which is, you know, while we talk about containers when it, or as it uh, refers to things like IDAS as well. And in general, in Red Hat, we're pretty agnostic whether, you know, whatever cloud or whatever type of infrastructure or server that you're on. So uh, with that said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bounce back and forth. I'm gonna show you a couple other tools that kind of make this possible. And as I'm talking, please, please, please feel free to interrupt if you have any questions whatsoever. This, uh, this next tool is another thing that Alan showed on the slide that was a, a, a part of the puzzle. And this is called Red Hat Satellite. And Red Hat Satellite is used primarily for a patching and vulnerability patching system. Uh, but as you can see in this dashboard, it also has support for things like compliance reports. And the reason I talked about OpenSCAP first is OpenSCAP is integrated into this tool. So in, and I can probably make this a little larger in case that's small, but in this little submenu around compliance and policies, I can, across all of my systems, I can define a HIPAA compliance, a HIPAA compliance uh, policy and then I can apply that directly to my systems, and that's how that's the start of the sort of automation there. Uh, if I go directly to what these reports look like, um, I'm going to I have this running on a few different systems. I just call them HIPAA just so I could find them really easily. Uh, but I have these set to run once a week or so, and I run a couple on demand. But if I just click on one of these reports, uh, what it's going to do is it's, it, it actually ran a scan using this open SCAP tool and the framework and all the things that I created there, uh, customized and everything. And now I have a very specific 
um, report that's based on this individual system that shows me how does the system compare against uh, the HIPAA compliance profile whatsoever. So this was the first question that the customer asked me that, uh, that worked at the, uh, in the IT department of this hospital down here in the Southwest. Number one, how can I get a whole, how can I get a handle on how many of my systems are first out of compliance, right? And, and so this, this shows you a very specific report about this individual system. And then it goes into even more detail about, hey, of the things that passed and failed, why did they pass or fail? Uh, so you'll see things around uh, when I log into a system that's HIPAA compliant, I have to enable a, a warning banner that tells people that it's illegal to be in the system unless you have, you're authorized to do so. Uh, FIPS 140 certification, you'll see that a couple of times because that's uh, uh, definitely one of the core components. Uh, but for any of these, um, let's say for validated ciphers, I'm just going to pick on one of these at random. You get lots and lots of more detail about why this is failing. But just like in the other tool that I mentioned, you always get a bash script and an Ansible snippet. And this Ansible snippet is, uh, it, 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 it looks a little uh, complex right now, but I promise we'll unwind this in September when we go through and talk about what is Ansible and how does it work. But this relatively small piece of code, I mean, small compared to if I expand the bash script, this is gonna be much longer, right? A little harder to read. But uh, this one piece of Ansible code when run against this system will remediate this, uh, this thing that failed, right? So I, I will have my FIPS certification related to validated ciphers. And, and that applies to anything that failed here as well, right? So it's been broken out by categories and things like that. So that satisfies the first part. Uh, now, how do we take that and we take all of those Ansible rules together and how do we actually remediate that system? And one other piece that I'd like to show you is a website called Ansible Galaxy, uh, galaxy.ansible.com. This is a repository of uh, automation that people in the community have shared and they thought, hey, this is something I wanna contribute back. Uh, if you go to this site and you search for HIPAA, one of the things that will come up is this uh, Red Hat official repo where we have a uh, HIPAA compliance profile based on RHEL 7. So essentially what we did is we took all of these things, pass or fail, and we, we added them into one very long playbook. Uh, here's a snapshot of what the Git repo looks like. Uh, even if I make this big, hopefully you can see, can't even, it's kind of hidden back here, how small my my scroll bar is, I think this is probably on the order of 13 or 14,000 lines of code. So, uh, so Alan, when we talk about your, uh, your, your math equation for, for value there, <laughs> this is uh, 14,000 lines of free code. So I think, I hope the value is pretty good there. We've, we've written this, not we specifically, but the, you know, folks in the community have, have written all of the things that go into these. So you don't, that's something you don't have to do. But what we can do though, is take that same playbook and we put it into that the next section that I showed, which was Ansible Tower. And Ansible Tower is the piece that integrates with all the things we've seen so far. The open SCAP, it really brings it together with the satellite report and things like that. And it allows us to create a template that is very specific to that particular playbook. So in, in this particular system, uh, in this particular template, I'm getting a little more fine grained and saying now, now that I know that I need to remediate these systems, now I'm gonna go out and reach out and actually do it, right? And, and that's, where, that's what Ansible does really well. Um, this particular template just really goes and applies this one playbook, but it applies it to all of my systems. And just for the sense of scale here, uh, Ansible can do this to probably about um, I've heard numbers on the order of about 700 to 750 systems in 30 minutes or less. And, and the way that it does that is by doing a massive, what we call forks. Uh, essentially, it runs all of these jobs in parallel and then waits for them all to, uh, all to um, complete. So again, we can go into some of the details of that when we get further into the Ansible training and the Ansible presentation. But another thing I like to mention is that this, this is really part of a larger sort of workflow. And this, I'll zoom in a bit here. 
uh, workflows are a concept in Ansible that let you tie together um, particular things with the bigger picture, these templates with the bigger picture. So in this example, I'm going out to patch my servers and then as part of that, I wanna run some HIPAA compliance. So the first thing I do, just as an example, I go out and I stop all my web services, I patch all my development servers, and then I can branch off and say, well, on failure, maybe I want to power off the system or maybe I wanna take it off of the network or disable some services that are, are not no longer secure. But if it is successful after the patch, maybe I wanna reboot my system and Ansible knows how to reboot and then keep going, right? And after that, now this is where I actually go do my HIPAA compliance because after I patch, I wanna make sure that my system is still compliant. And then I just keep sort of branching off from there, right? So as you can see, it's part of a, one, one part of a much larger sort of orchestrated policy there, right? So that is a, that's essentially it in a nutshell, but just to kind of recap where we started, it, it, all, it all really does start with this framework that allows us to have a downloadable policy. And then we use this satellite tool to have a nice reporting engine so that we can see at a, at a macro level, uh, or even drilling down into the micro level, what actually pass failed on this system. And at the very end of that, what we're actually going to do is kick that off, whether, whether one off or as part of a larger sort of workflow, and that's actually going to remediate the system. Uh, so what we, uh, you know, what we sometimes show as, as part of a demo, it, it, you know, it might take a few minutes, so I won't go through it now, but if I were to go through and remediate this individual system, I would see that all of these, you know, flip over to pass, right? And I can see exactly, uh, you know, when, when those rules broke and, and when they were fixed and remediated. So this, again, all of this is really just one area that automated compliance is part of, is part of IDAS. And uh, that uh, hospital that I mentioned really used that. And, and today I'm happy to say that they are, you know, using this sort of full workflow and cycle around um, automating their compliance across all of the Linux systems. And, and then again, just for reference, these are only Linux systems, not necessarily the network devices, the Windows systems. Um, there is open SCAP support uh, in the works for Windows systems as well. So it's really got a lot of legs in the community and, and uh, you know, because of things like HIPAA compliance and because of the Ansible automation under the covers, it's really, really gotten just a, just a, lot, of, uh, a lot of traction there. So I will, uh, I will pause there. Would love to entertain any questions or comments, but uh, we wanted to really start at a high level and, uh, you know, Daniel sort of brought it home there and, and Alan really diving into the HIPAA compliance and, but really IDAS as a whole. And uh, I'm really just drilling into one part, but I do encourage you to check out some of the Git repos that, uh, that Alan mentioned. And, you know, I'm also happy to talk in more detail about anything related to uh, Open SCAP and Ansible as well. Hey Brad, it's Alan. For those that don't know, do you want to talk a little bit about the whole compute, how many playbooks exist? Because I know you showed people where they can go, but just talk about from your perspective how we view it and then um, on a, on a, as a backup question to that, how companies like Microsoft and others are using Ansible day in, day out? Yeah, that is actually, and I, you might have noticed I had a, another little tab here open. I, I wouldn't mind showing you as well. Um, the Ansible community is really strong, and one thing I'd like to show you, if I can get the zoom out of the way, uh, if you go to ansible.com, you can, you'll come across something called this module index. And the module index, you know, very much like the automation tools of, uh, you know, other flavors of automation tools, they're pre-written pieces of code that make your automation easier. So let's, let's stay with the cloud approach. If I'm looking at the modules that come and all of these come out of the box with uh, Ansible, which is another reason that it makes it really so popular. Just for Amazon and AWS alone, I have probably 30 or 40 or maybe even 50 or more modules. Just one of these modules is used to create an instance in EC2, right? So if I, if I drill down into this module, I'll get a synopsis, I'll get lots and lots of parameters, like whether I wanna assign a public IP, how many instances I want to launch, 
And at the bottom of each of these pages is always a, a very simplified